Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. For get a quick reaction is the great one, Life, Liberty, the Levin. We call him Mark Levin, the great one, is with us. You know, Mark, uh, it really comes down to the arguments that were made by Schumer and Pelosi. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but it looked like a Saturday Night Live opening uh, skit. Um, but especially considering Chuck Schumer in particular has passed support, Obama support, Hillary support, Biden support for barriers and a wall, both right. in 2006 and 13. But they're, they're saying that this is a manufactured crisis, and they are saying that they're upset about the delayed checks to furloughed federal government employees, which I am sympathetic towards. But the president is making the case that we have Americans being victims of crime, homicide, sexual assault, other violent assaults, that we have All right. trafficking, that we have that's going across the border, human trafficking, drug trafficking. To me, it's about life and death or inconvenience this is not manufactured. You can't tell the son of Officer Singh that this is a manufactured crisis. This is a real life and death right. situation for many American families. And I wanted to get your reaction to tonight's well, first uh, statements. Of all, the president gave an outstanding speech. It was concise. It was compassionate and truly compassionate. He provided the context, both in terms of what's going on in the border, the expense, which is de minimis. Uh, and who's really responsible. Now, let's keep a few things in mind when you watch Schumer and Pelosi. They're pathological liars. They've been in Congress over half a century. What the hell have they done about the border? Nothing. They're part of the scam artists. They get amnesty, legalization, citizenship, and never secure the border. Just spend billions and trillions more, more debt, more deficits, on the redistribution of wealth, on $200 billion a year on illegal aliens, one more time. They fooled Reagan, they fooled Bush 41, they fooled Bush 43, but they're not going to fool Donald Trump, who's dealt with tougher than Pelosi and Schumer. And let me point out a few things. These two and the rest of them are never forced to explain their flip-flop. Where they voted for border security, they voted to authorize walls, they voted to fund some of the walls, and now all of a sudden it's immoral. You know what's immoral? When everybody talks about those government employees who will be temporarily uh, inconvenienced, who will get their money back, but nobody talks about the unskilled, low-skilled American worker who has to compete with people from Guatemala, from Honduras, from Mexico, from south of the border who come into this country illegally. Nobody talks about the big corporations like Hewlett-Packard and Boeing and Disney and others who are part of the scam artist operation who want illegal aliens in this country. Nobody talks about the fact that destroying our immigration system, these Democrat city sanctuary cities, these Democrat state sanctuary states, where the citizens are treated as second-class citizens, and the taxpayers have to cough up the money for what? Let me explain what this is about. Power. Democrat Party power. Democrat Party before country. There's an excellent piece in, of all places, the Atlantic, a left-wing site written by a guy by the name of Peter Bonhart, a liberal. And he says, between 2008 and 26, the Democrats became more and more confident that the country's growing Latino po population gave the party an electoral edge. So they switched Salon, which is a left-wing site. They declared, after Obama's 2008 win, if that pattern continues with the Latino vote, the GOP is doomed for 40 years of wandering in the desert. And he goes on to explain this. This is a liberal on a liberal site. That is exactly what's going on. Notice Pelosi and Schumer didn't talk about the American worker. Notice they didn't talk about the communities on the border that are suffering. Notice they never talk about law and order because they hate law enforcement. They never talk about the overwhelming costs involved in health care, the overwhelming costs involved in our public schools, localities and states they're barely reimbursed for this. Hey, Mark. We, the American taxpayer, the American citizen, we take it in the neck. One other thing. The Democrat platform in 2008. Read it. Let me ask the, you, the Mark, hold if on I now. can. The Democrat platform in 2008 Let basically me... supports virtually everything the Republican president of the United States said today. The American people haven't changed. The Republican Party hasn't changed. The Democrats, for political reasons and power reasons, 
They've changed, and they want to drag us all off the cliff with them. Hey, Mark, that's a great point, and we, we played their past statements many times on this program. I know you played it on your radio show in Life, Liberty, and Levin. I want to get into the issue of legality, and I, know, I saw a post that you made, and that is that the president, as the commander-in-chief, has the right to declare a national emergency, which would then therefore give him the funds. Obviously, it would end up in the courts. They go judge shopping. They put it in a court in California, so it would go to the Ninth Circuit. I want to talk about the legality of that, and also, as the commander-in-chief, constitutionally, this is your wheelhouse, uh, wouldn't he have the ability to say that this is a national security issue, and as such, be able to appropriate funds from the Defense Department as well? Doesn't as he have usual, other options here? For, it, as usual, no uh, brag, just fact. It's left to me to straighten out all the phony experts on cable and network TV. Who have law degrees and pretend they know something. It's called the National Emergency Act. There are Act a lot of, of dumb lawyers on TV, Mark. I agree. And, and basically, Congress passed this to tighten, to limit what a president could do unilaterally. And there is a provision in the statute. It's a statute, so it's not the president acting unconstitutionally. And in this statute, if Congress wants to reverse or halt what the president is doing unilaterally, it takes a joint resolution of the House and Senate, a majority vote of both. So there is a check. That's number one. Number two, these powers essentially, in different iterations in the past, different laws in the 20 past, seconds, Mark. go back before Abraham Lincoln. They have been exercised multiple times. I would tell the Bushy never Trumpers they were exercised multiple times by George W. Bush. All right, Mark, we got to have to let it go there. Uh, Mark Levin, the great one, Life, Liberty, and uh, Levin, number one show on slot Sunday nights, 10 Eastern here on the Fox News Channel. Fox News alert and breaking news as we take a look at the White House now. They have just wrapped up an off-the-record uh luncheon, if you will, with some journalists there. That's kind of what, not off the record, it is on, but there are not any cameras in there. And in addition to that, the counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, has just stepped away from a meeting with the commander in chief. So a lot going on inside the White House. So what did he have to say about that Oval Office meeting? Let's talk with Kellyanne now as she joins me. Thank you so much for coming out of the White House to speak with us so quickly, Kellyanne. Uh, the president has a message he wants to take to the American people about what happens at the border and whether it's a crisis? What is that message? Yes, Harrison, he uh, previewed some of that tonight's national address with members in the meeting, including your own colleague, Brett Baer. I just left that lunch. The president wants America to know that we have a humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. Why? Well, the humanitarian crisis has manifested itself in many different ways. Uh, traditionally, over the past however many years, the vast, vast majority of those trying to cross into this country illegally have been single males from Mexico. Now we have this sudden increase among family units and unaccompanied children coming from the Northern Triangle countries. And uh, it's a very dangerous journey for them. We've seen many of them are are sick or not well, um, they're malnourished, they, they don't have access to food and water for many days on this journey, and, the, and, and two, of course, died on this journey, um, very regretfully, God rest their souls. The president is saying to their parents or them, sending them on the trek, don't take the trek, it's a dangerous journey, you're being promised things by coyotes who are taking your money, and perhaps worse, you're being promised things that can't be delivered upon. In fact, come through one of the 26 legal ports of entry and put your claim there, put your asylum claim there. Mexico has offered to give them work visas and safe passage while that claim is being processed. The, the humanitarian crisis also manifests itself through the human trafficking. And we, I've heard these stories directly from Customs and Border Patrol. Right. They know because of their front lines. And finally, the drugs alone. If we were only talking about the drugs pouring over the southern border, the increases in fentanyl, meth, heroin, and cocaine, we could finish with the conversation. The steel barrier is important, but also the, the, the president also yeah. supports many things the Democrats support, like more technology, more personnel, more detection right. and devices. And those are things that, that Democrats also agree on. I just had on Congressman yes. Kildee of Michigan, and he ticked off those same three things that Senator Corden was talking about, barriers, one of those things, technology and people. I want to press back a little bit. So the deaths of those two children, they were in our care, they were in our custody. So we don't yes. want to blur the line that this happened on their journey somewhere south of the border. No, 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 that, no, no, that no. Would I didn't not say that, case. and I've said yeah. otherwise so I just on your network make that, before. Yeah, I, I no, want to make that no clear question. to everybody. So, well, let me make it clear, too. Let me go a couple steps further, because I requested and received a full briefing on those two children's deaths from Customs and Border Patrol, because I wanted the answers. And uh, it's very tragic. Any death of a child, any death of anybody is tragic Amen. to me. All right. Let, and, let's and so, and God rest their souls, but we don't want 
people taking that perilous journey in the first place. We want them to come here legally. The president wants legal immigration and wants people to come through the ports of entry and not take this dangerous journey. These children are coming here by themselves or as family units. They're being promised things that simply don't exist. All, all right. So an emergency at the border. The president also, after the primetime address tonight, getting ready to go to McAllen, Texas. What is he looking for uh, in, in terms of after talking with the American people? Is this an investigative journey? What is he looking looking for if he were to make an executive order based on an emergency. This entire week the president is trying to share with the American people what he knows firsthand, which is what is really happening at the border. Um, the human trafficking, the drugs, the, the children that we just talked about, but also what would help deter that? What kind of physical infrastructure would help to impede mm -hmm. and deter that so that these vulnerable populations um, can be protected on that side of the border and frankly the vulnerable populations here like our children will be protected from these drugs pouring in I don't want them in my community coming to my kids these drugs this poison and so right. the president also will go to the border where he's been before so that um, so that he can share with the American people what is happening there the problem identification but then the solution identification also okay. he is way on to the solutions he's been talking about the solutions for a very long time and I have to say in spending a lot of time with the president the vice president in the last few days the vice president led the negotiations he he is making clear that the letter that OMB sent to um, Ch Chairman Shelby in the Senate um, the whole back part of the whole back side of that letter you can pull it up and publish it if you like the whole back side of that letter are really a number of the things the Democrats want they want the personnel the detection devices it's in right. there well and as we Congressman agree. Kildee told me they're not saying no to a border because you know where I started with him well if you don't like a border and if it is immoral as Nancy Pelosi says then tear down the other 600 plus miles no, that's right the Democrats are they not going to do, do this that's Look, right. I, I want to get a point in because we got uh, and I'm sure other networks did too the Trump Pence campaign letter that went out PR email a little while ago and it says that the campaign for re-election will try to raise a half million dollars in one day off of tonight's speech I, I thought that these speeches were not supposed to be political what do you say about that I haven't seen that letter and here at the White House I'm not meant to be political so I don't have a comment on that but I, I haven't even seen the letter all right Kellyanne Conway we look forward to carrying the president's speech 9 p.m. Eastern right on this network thank you for joining me today thanks for having me